I'm uh, Debbie Spiliotopoulos with the Virginia Regional Commission, and thank you all. Corey and I are, um, have coordinated this with uh, Brendan and Ryan, and the introductory part is going to be really short, but uh, the plan is we're going to um, uh, do a guided tour and discuss the southern alignment and then um, arrive back at Leeslevania. Uh, we will, on the way back from seeing all the sites, have um, a moment to discuss a few questions in smaller groups since we have you um, just on what you think the priorities are and what you've seen and we can follow up with a survey monkey also and um, so with that I wanted to see if uh, Jane do you have anything you'd like to say since you represent Mrs. Cadigan well, I am so glad everybody's here to see this and it's going to be exciting other than hot you know we got a, look we're getting a breeze through here now so it's wonderful <laughs> How much uh, Woodbridge has done for you know the trail, and how much more we're going to do on other things, and see some history today. Thanks. Great. And then uh, Don Briggs is the instigator of a lot of this stuff. Um, so Don, do you want to just introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, Don Briggs, National Park Service. I guess I would say that um, we don't manage segments of the National Scenic Trail outside of the existing. NPS area. So Cynthia Sir here is, a, here is with me as the chief ranger for Prince William Forest Park, which has trail segments in it. But throughout the whole corridor, it's really a lot of local, uh, regional, state agencies and volunteers who are really advocates for completing the whole uh, trail network. There's some brochures up here that actually explains more about the geography. Great. Is that kind of what you wanted? That was what I wanted. And. Um, then I'm going to give it to over to uh, Ryan and Brendan, and then we'll do a big introduction since we're going to all be together for three hours so you know who everybody is. Go ahead. Uh, so I'm Ryan Delaney. I'm the trails planner with Prince William County Parks and Recreation, and just want to say thank you guys for coming out. Um, I think we're going to have fun today and hopefully uh, put into context some of the stuff that you guys know about the trail and uh, the, the little bit you've been able to glean from our maps. This will be a good perspective. Since most of the trail doesn't exist yet, we'll be able to follow the corridor in real time and um, hopefully be able to take some enthusiasm back to your to your friends and potential volunteers and, uh, and advocates. Uh, good morning. I'm uh, Brendan Hannifin, the Historic Preservation Chief for the County. I was also the Chief Ranger Assistant Manager here for about a dozen years when we were building Pennsylvania. So it's nice to come home. The trees are getting bigger, and that's making me feel a lot older. <laughs> um, th thanks for coming today. It, as, as Ryan said, this is about really showing off the different segments of the of the Potomac Heritage Trail, but it's also to show off the Potomac River. That's why we have you guys on a boat. Um, the, not a lot of people in Prince William County know that the Potomac River is one one part of our, our community. This trail is to highlight that. So by being on the boat and looking at the trail segments from the water, you will be able to show you where you'll be able to see the water from from the trail. Um, and uh, we're really excited about this part of it. It's really been a, uh, a long process, but things are getting done. And, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll clue you all in. Uh, before we head all the way up to Belmont, we're gonna go to Belmont and then come back down. And we'll actually go through the segments once we hit Belmont. I just want to uh, thank uh, Mark Perry, Captain Perry, uh, for uh, yes. having us today. Yes. Uh, thank Mark you. does a heck of a lot. Uh, my right, your left, uh, is a Pennsylvania State Park Living Shoreline project that uh, Tom Dombrowski uh, and I worked on together with Karen Mandy of uh, the park manager. And you can see uh, part of the shoreline was severely eroded away. So like over there it looks like that before yeah so i mean they were losing one to three feet of bank per year so we came up with a solution uh, to stabilize the shoreline and reduce erosion by installing these rock fills those are those long uh, pieces of, of stones that you see and behind that there is uh, planted heavily with different grasses and that sort of holds the sand in place. And it's called a living shoreline. Uh, and we did all of that construction with entirely with grant funding. Um, so it's, it's really a great um, introduction to this type of shoreline restoration in, uh, along the Potomac River. You see it in the other places down in the tidewater, but this is really the first example of it down uh, or up this part of the river. Was it uh, the Dominion? Yeah, they gave us a brand. Dominion Power. 5% grant or No, they, uh, they funded part of it, uh, National Fish and Wildlife.
to give you guys a little bit of the context of the trail as it enters the county from Fairfax in the north. Um, if you can't, sorry, Brendan. Oh, <laughs> Let me hold that up. Yeah. The so the Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail enters Prince William County at the town of Occoquan on the Occoquan Footbridge. If you guys have seen that uh, near River Mill Park, and it continues on uh, sidewalk and street uh, bike route through. Occoquan and Northern Woodbridge down to Belmont Bay uh, to the town center and that's where things start to get interesting. Uh, from Belmont Bay the trail will enter the Occoquan Bay National Wildlife Refuge. This is one of our current projects. It's roughly a, a mile of trail. Uh, right there? Yes. Yeah. Thanks Lynn. Uh, yeah so this is the refuge on our left. Um, we're constructing a crushed stone trail segment of roughly a mile that will connect through the, the wildlife refuge from the town center to Veterans Memorial Park, which is one of our county parks that has a pool, a rec center, a skate park, uh, and its own 0.6 mile natural surface section of the, the Heritage Trail, uh, with some great opportunities to view scenic views of Marumsco Creek and the wildlife refuge from the other side. Uh, yeah. uh, <coughs> uh, historically, and then for the natural resource part of it, uh, the, the trail connects Occoquan, which I'm sure everybody's been there. I actually was in there yesterday. Um, a beautiful little uh, post-colonial town. Lots of shops, lots of places to eat. A great attraction for the county. Uh, into Belmont, which is one of our newer uh, housing developments, has its own marina. The uh, Virginia Science Museum is being built there. And, and into Occoquan Bay National Wildlife Refuge. So they're just, just in this one section of this trail, first part of the trail. We have all these opportunities for historic, for natural, for hiking, uh, for shopping, for entertainment, for food. It's just a, a, a great way to kick off the trail coming into the county. Uh, and a lot, of, it's planned. It's all been planned for years, and we're now we're just we're working on the actual physical segments now. Which the planning is harder than the, the, the building of trails. I don't know about the national. Uh, it's typically pretty limited access to a national wildlife area. It's usually trails and foot traffic. Um, uh, do they have bike trails? Uh, this, this one in particular does not. I actually believe there's even a run, don't walk rule in effect. For, there, it, Occoquan Bay has a lot of migratory birds. It's a hot spot for birding, so they try to keep the human impact very low. Uh, you can race walk, but you can't run. Yeah, yeah don't pick up your knees. Uh, so the, the section of trail uh, we're anticipating going to construction hopefully in uh, early 2018 and uh, the trails open by the end of May ideally. Uh, working with our partners NBRC, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, as Brendan said, this is one, a long time in coming. We're really excited. This one segment alone is going to create not just a cool recreational resource, an interpretive resource, but also uh, human scale connectivity between a major development and a major county park. So great local resource as well. And we don't have to keep the stops super formal, so if you have questions, feel free to toss them at us midstream. Can, can you point to us where we're at right now, Ryan? We're right across the Belmont Bay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and on the other side of the tree line is Veterans Memorial Park. Yeah, you'll see, you'll see that this area here, Ryan mentioned the, the National Surface Trail in the, in the park, which is a beautiful trail. Uh, it's along the water, uh, lots of lots of wildlife. Uh, it's a wetlands type area, so there's a lot of wetlands birds and things like that. Um, it's, great, it's a great walk. Now, that's a busy park. <laughs> that's a, uh, it's probably good to go in the evening. But um, uh, when we come out of here, you see, you'll start to see the river from the park. Or the, well, this is considered Occoquan Bay, but it's all the Potomac River. Uh, Jennifer? The walk does not apply to the new trail that you're putting in or the pot to existing trail? To the existing trail shown on the map. We're actually, as part of this construction, moving their fence line. So the trail will be on refuge property, but outside of their fence line. Uh, the bikes are allowed. Yeah. And you can jog. Yeah. You just have to stop when you get to the, to the parking lot. Yeah. So our, our section of trail actually crosses their main trailhead and parking lot. So there's no direct connection to the existing trail system. Um, 
in terms of like an intersection, there it, it just takes you right by the entrance to the existing trail system. Yeah, um, so Corey brings up uh, one of the projects we've been working on, a scenic viewshed analysis of uh, spots along the Heritage Trail. Several of the spots are within Veterans Memorial Park on the existing natural surface trail that offer views across from Rumsco Creek into the, the Occoquan Bay Wildlife Refuge from the other side than, uh, than we're seeing right now. So great opportunity to view uh, sort of a marshy, flatter habitat um, and a lot of, as Brenda mentioned, a lot of aquatic birds, uh, wildlife, really cool, really cool area that you wouldn't expect from the rest of the park even, let alone from being in the Northwood Bridge. Yes, yeah. yeah, so just behind us is Woodbridge. I mean, it is intensely developed and, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people live in this area, so this is part of the beauty of this trail is to get people away from that development, go through developments that make sense for the trail, because we want to connect these developments, but it gives you a chance to get in, into nature five minutes from your house. So uh, Veterans is a great place to do that. Aquaman is a great place to do that. Uh, Aquaman Bay. Um, and then of course, all the way down through here, we have these jewels that we're connecting and uh, there's been plenty, plenty of opportunities to, uh, to have a great walk or a run or a bike ride or, Whatever. What about boat access? Are you guys doing that on the trail? Boat access? We're, we're talking about canoe and kayak access. Lisa Vang is your boat access. Right. Uh, sure and also some private marinas that are dotted along the uh, along the, the bay and the river. Uh, but we are talking about how do we put areas in. Aquan is your number one kayak and canoe access. Uh, the Absco Creek as well. Um, I don't think we're else. We're exploring the possibility of Morumsco Creek, either from the Bethel Refuge or from Veterans Park. Although, because the uh, the property is owned by the Fish and Wildlife Service all the way up to our county park shoreline, uh, there's some logistical hurdles in there. But that would make another logical public kayak launch place. Uh, and, and Belmont Bay has a harbor, but it's private for, for the residents there. So I'm sure they're they're able to access it, the residents. And they do have a, a kayak club there as well that has on-site boat storage. So there are some opportunities for us, like a public-private uh, you know, clubs operating on private uh, private land there. And of course, Pennsylvania has canoes and kayaks for rent too. So they do a really big business in that. So there's already a lot of opportunities. Uh, Quantico, you can launch with Quantico as well from the, from the town of Quantico. So um, I think we, we think we're pretty good there, but we're always looking for other opportunities. Yeah, it's the tail end of the Featherstone National Wildlife okay, Refuge, which we discussed a little bit earlier. Uh, our current project is constructing one mile of natural surface trail and wetland boardwalk through this refuge to my left, which until this point was only publicly accessible by kayak from the water. Um, one of the really cool features about this that's really helping us tie the recreation and, and the human scale transportation together is the, the trailhead is actually the VRE station. So we've already constructed a ramp uh, utilizing VRE's bridge from their parking lot to the train platform, down the train platform into the wildlife refuge as the southern trailhead for uh, the Featherstone segment. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can't really ask for a better uh, example project that showcases the way the Potomac Heritage Trail is not just like your traditional scenic hiking trail, but also a major artery for human scale transportation and community connection in Prince William County. Um, we're actually using a railway station as a segment of the trail. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and similar timeline to Occoquan, we're, we're anticipating having that done in, in May, May to June of this coming year. Construction starting in early 2018. The boardwalk too? Sorry. Uh, not the Neapsco boardwalk. But there are several small sections of boardwalk okay. and pedestrian bridge within the refuge. Right, right. Um, but Tom brings us to uh, our other major project, the boardwalk crossing of Neapsco Creek, which is behind us. Uh, Many of you guys know from our county board meeting and a, a couple articles in the paper, uh, we've awarded a contract to Nature Bridges, uh, 
a specialist firm that deals with uh, wetland boardwalks, pedestrian bridges, and greenways to construct a uh, 3,000 foot pedestrian boardwalk connecting from our county's Ripon Landing Park on the north bank of Neabsco Creek, which is to our left, uh, to Brendan Hannafin's group's uh, Metz Wetland Preserve on the south bank. And this, uh, not only again, a transportation connection and a traditional trail, it's going to have opportunities for outdoor classrooms and interpretation, as well as an observation deck on the north landing that will allow people to see the view shed of Neabsco Creek from a new perspective. Uh, so that's going to be roughly an 18-month construction project. We're, constru we're constructing it um, as environmentally sensitively as we can, so it will be built top-down, uh, meaning the construction equipment will utilize completed sections of the boardwalk to inch further out over the creek, drive the pilings, and deck the boardwalk as they go so there's no impacts or minimal impacts to the water, the marshy areas, um, and we get a really good sustainable product out of it. The uh, Neabsco Creek is, is one of the most historic places in the county uh, and it is one of the greatest natural resources in the county as well. Uh, Leesylvania to our south here was uh, a major plantation, uh, Leesylvania Plantation. The Light Horse Harry Lee was born there. Uh, to you, to the north was Ripon Lodge. And you, you can't quite see it, but that big hill right there is Ripon Lodge. It's a 42 acre historic site, but it, it, back in the day it had been much bigger. Uh, Richard Blackburn built that in the 1740s. And then you had straight up the river, pretty much where those houses are now, those townhouses are now, a little bit to the left, was the tail of ironworks. That was close to 8,000 acres of uh, an iron furnace that helped uh, um, with, with munitions during uh, the War of 1812. So it's a very, very historic area. Uh, the the Africa Creek Wetlands Preserve, which is to your left, was a, a, called the River Farm at one point. So it was a farm. Uh, the boardwalk will connect all that together. There's also two sections of the King's Highway that we've uh, recently acquired. Um, that'll be small, tra small trail segments, not on the trail, but you can go see them. And uh, they're both trails because they were all roads. So, um, this, but what happened here is development upstream, tobacco uh, logging, and in houses ultimately with Dale City silted in the river. So it stopped being a port, uh, the creek, I'm sorry, it stopped being a port and is now a massive wetlands. It's uh, close to the the Metz Wetlands is 200 acres. We're now working with the developer uh, adjacent Ripon Lodge to acquire another 65 acres of the of the, and that's where the boardwalk is going through. And you, you, that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, wetlands, and it's an amazing area for aquatic life, for uh, butterflies and bugs, and for fish. That's aquatic life, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> and birds. So it's uh, it's a. It's already a well-attended park. Lots of folks hike there every day, but it's going to be a major segment of the Commerce yeah. Heritage Trail. And it connects directly to Leeslevania. So that's done. So that's a big component of this that's already completed, which is right here. One of the other unique interpretive opportunities we're going to have on the section of Potomac Heritage Trail uh, immediately north of Neabsco Creek is the Service Authority's Moody Water Treatment Plant, which has an environmental education center, and they've been working with Parks to develop um, a co-branded heritage trail and environmental education center kiosk. Uh, big thanks to Don and National Park Service for paying for that. Um, so we'll have the opportunity right along the trail to direct people to a, yet another environmental education opportunity, um, you know, leaving the, the GMU Science Center at Belmont Bay, um, coming to the Mooney plant, and then the outdoor classroom space on the boardwalk. So another dimension to the trail through Woodbridge is that it, it's going to be a really great opportunity for uh, education and environmental sciences and history um, and the impacts of development. So it can be a great opportunity for our school systems and universities to do field trips and uh, really add, add a lot of value to, uh, to the trail. Debbie would kill me if I didn't remind you guys those sheets of questions that we have are going to what that's going to be what uh, guides the discussion after the tour. So if you just want to take a quick glance at those as we're cruising between spots and uh, think about you know which which of these portions of the tour and sites stood out and uh, we're looking for feedback on the format so we can do these on other sections of the Heritage Trail in other counties around the area. So 
please keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, we're going to Leesylvania? Yeah. Uh, Leesylvania has, has been open since 92, and it has a pretty good trail system as well. So uh, we're, this is the North Shore. Uh, we consider that to be the historic area of the park, where the Lee family plantation, the house was. That's about a two mile trail. Uh, it's, it's moderate to difficult. Uh, we do a, actually my, myself and my old boss host the uh, first day hikes every January, January 1st. We had 160 people last year. So that kind of tells you how much demand. It's hard to talk to that many people, uh, especially on a small trail. So um, it's a very popular park, very popular for hiking. Then we have, um, I'm going to get myself here. That's right through here. And then there's a, about a mile long waterfront trail, uh, which, is, which is great because it's flat. And we saw that when uh, Corey mentioned the living, um, the shoreline project, that's part of that trail. Then there's a really great uh, little wetlands area. That's a Bushy Point Trail. You gotta remember now, that's, that's about three quarters of a mile. And that connects to the Potomac Heritage Trail, which is part of Powell's Creek Trail, which is two miles long. And that actually might be a little longer since they rerouted it. Yeah. But, so you're looking at at least close to six miles of trails within the park. Yeah. And, so. and, and DCR in Leeslevania has been a, a really great partner with uh, help from the Student Conservation Association. They actually recently renovated their portion of the trail uh, that went from the Neabsco Creek Wetland Reserve that Brendan mentioned, uh, all the way into the county's Powell's Landing Park. Uh, so that was done to bring it up to uh, higher standards of sustainability and user experience, and in the process also make it a little bit more suitable for bicycles, uh, as the sections in Woodbridge that we manage are open to bikes and we wanted to have a continuous user experience. So there's still some sections of the trail in Leeslevania that have no bike signs, although we're told they're in the process of being removed as we move to uh, construct our next couple of segments. Brian, any chance of using the open space of the water treatment plant on Ripon Boulevard? Have you talked to you about that? Uh, it's not been part of the discussion. Uh, at the moment, it's on the paved uh, bicycle pedestrian trail along Ripon Boulevard, although there is going to be um, a kiosk and directional signage taking people into the Moody Plants uh, Environmental Center. But it's something I'd like to explore in the future. Just yeah, we have an Osprey to our your left. They're fierce. Yeah. But I, I didn't, we didn't mention, but uh, Black Run Road, which is right here, uh, we, we cross the creek and we get away from Black Run Road, but a new sidewalk's going in. Which So you could actually access the houses on, on Route 1 where the 7 Eleven wall and the car dealer are. So that's another uh, big connection point. It's not part of the trail, but it'll get people to the trail. So that's a big deal. The sidewalks can go all the way down to Route 1? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's actually going to be a, a wide asphalt path. That's going to be up here. Right here. Yeah. That's, uh, that's in design now, so that'll be, I don't know the timetable on that, but that should be coming along soon. Yeah. So that's a big part. For those of you who don't know Leeslevania, uh, it's a plantation from the 1750s. It was actually farmed as early as 1690. What happened was a lot of the, the, the planters, you know, they had more than one son. The, the, the first son got the plantation of, on the James River or on the York or wherever they were. The second, third got the hinterlands of the upper Potomac River. So Henry II uh, brought his wife Lucy here in the 1750s to build the plantation. It was just the biggest 3,000 acres at one point, on three different farms, a, a tobacco plantation, Freestone Point, it's called Freestone Point, that's on, our, on your right, because it's, sand, it's sandstone and they allow people just to cut it from foundations for free, because it really wasn't that good of sandstone. <coughs> so you see houses, old houses in Woodbridge that have sandstone that are from here. So uh, this, when we when the state built that pier, it started the sand started catching up, and that's why that beach is, is there now. The uh, on the other side of the modern pier, you'll see the uh, the pylons. That's the 1957 pier that led to the gambling ship. This was an amusement park and gambling ship for about a year and a half before it was shut down. Um, and the visit the museum has some great pictures of that time period inside Pennsylvania. This is the picnic area. 
I mentioned the trail goes up behind that for the Lee, the Lee History Trail. And then uh, you'll see our earlier iterations of trying to keep the keep the river at bay with the big stone uh, revetments. Uh, that's the picnic area. We've already been to the marina. Uh, it's 500, and, uh, I think 540, 550 acres at this point. So it's, a, it's, a, it's our singular biggest holding for the trail in the county. Why did they shut down the gambling boat? Well, the history, the, the history says it's because uh, they changed the law. Uh, they, they allowed liquor by the drink. And gambling, two things people in Virginia in the 50s didn't like. The, hit, the, the, the story says that it was because of the law change, but the, the, they went bankrupt. That's the part that no one really knows. They went bankrupt before the, the construction company that built it wasn't getting paid. So they foreclosed on it, and they sold the boat off. Um, after that, it became an amusement park for probably another five or six years, because um, they had a go kart, they had the pony rides, they had the Ferris wheel, they had all those things to keep it going. The story on that is Mr. White, who was running that, walked off the chestnut trees for the owner, and when they found out, they kicked him out. So the only access to Louisiana from the mid '60s until the late '80s was an old windy road that they used to have excursions to D.C. Church groups would put together a boat, pull up, and take people in. Uh, but it was basically a party spot. Who so it was the American Hawaiian Steamship Company, which was the biggest company in the world at that time. They donated half the assessed value of the land to the state. The state paid the other half. And uh, Delegate uh, David Brickley at the time, who was on the trail committee, who's on our regular committee, he's the one who forced to do the General Assembly as the, as the state General Assembly person. He's the guy, him and a local historian named Don Curtis, basically made that happen. The state didn't want it. It was 500 acres bisected by a railroad. No road to come in, lots of money there. So the state said no thank you. They got, the state park said no thank you. PCR said no thank you. Well, it wasn't PCR at the time, it was another department. They they forced it through. Commission Council of Recreation. And so he's, he, yeah, David, he, he was one who made it happen. So, uh, and then the first phase of de development here was the picnic area, the road, the gravel road. Uh, then the marina, and then the second phase was the visitor center, the uh, paving, the, everything, and really upgrading to the picnic area, picnic shelter. So that's pretty. It's a rocket place on a weekend. Was the um, the store a concession originally? Yes, it was concessionaire uh, until we took it over. Uh, that was a fun summer. But. Uh, yeah, so the store's open. My son works there. My son was born in Pennsylvania, or that's where he, and he actually works in the store now, so he might be the only person to be able to say that. So, so we're now, we're turning up towards Cowles Creek, which is the, the next uh, major tributary dumping into the Potomac here. Uh, the Potomac Heritage Trail, as it leaves Pennsylvania State Park, uh, follows the banks of Powell's Creek through the county's Powell's Landing Park, which is an undeveloped passive park that currently um, only has the trail built through it. Uh, that was a project funded by the Recreational Trails Program back in 2015, and it consists of a natural surface trail with uh, wetland boardwalks and in the winter some decent views. to the end. Um, there is street parking and a trailhead within the neighborhood. You actually have to cross the street from the trailhead at Leeselvania to get to it. Um, so this part has actually been constructed. And on National Trails Day, September 30th, if anybody's looking for a volunteer opportunity, uh, we have an easement and an existing volunteer-built trail that continues up Powell's Creek to Route 1, which is one of our connections from the Heritage Trail back into the developed areas along the Route 1 corridor that needs a lot of love. We're going to hopefully have 40 or 50 folks out there clearing the corridor, uh, constructing tread, and building uh, small wooden features if need be to cross um, wetland areas. That's not National Trails Day, but it's another uh, National, National Public Lands Day. National Public Lands yeah. Day, that's it. So, uh, just for clarification, on the state park map, the Potomac Heritage Trail doesn't go off property, but it does, and it's open, correct? It, it does, and it is open. And uh, big thanks to the Potomac Heritage Trail Association and all of our volunteers for building that last section, leaving the park. Um, 
long term, uh, to your left, our right, is uh, the future of Potomac Shores Town Center. Uh, Potomac Shores is a development that has its own natural surface public trail system. They've designated their Howes Creek Trail part of the, the Potomac Heritage Scenic Trail. Um, one of our long-term plans is to create a crossing of Powell's Creek the same way we are currently doing for Neabsco to link these two sections of natural surface trail for those trail users that want to continue their through hike or bike ride without having to come out to Route 1. Um, at which point this will become probably more of an access, local access trail um, and the main line of the trail will continue from Leeselvania straight into Potomac Shores, which is not only a residential district, but will have a uh, uh, commercial town center with restaurants, bars, uh, and its own natural surface trail system, which is a really cool uh, amenity. If you've been to the Great Allegheny Passage as it enters Pittsburgh, uh, that's sort of what we're envisioning, the trail in front of the town center overlooking the river, um, offering some scenic opportunities and a public space for folks that live in Potomac Shores and Dumfries to gather and, uh, and have fun. We're entering uh, Powell's Creek right now. You'll see the, the another railroad bridge. And uh, what Ryan mentioned was a second boardwalk back up in the creek. You connect, it'll be a much uh, smaller boardwalk. Yeah. It's much less uh, area to connect. That's on our radar. That's not something that we're even really planning yet. Um, the bridge that I can't go up in there. Okay, no, yeah. I understand. Believe me, I know that. So uh, we'll point out that you see, you see those large trees that look like they're abnormally big for that area yeah. that's the town center that's the cemetery so we can't cut the trees down everything else around it has been cut down so that that, that is the town that's an easy way to see the town center <laughs> how old is that cemetery right huh? how old is the cemetery well, that's a that's a colonial era cemetery yeah so it's a big one too this is all part of Potomac Shores and the trail system. When you're walking the trail system, you're walking, you can see the creek. It's an excellent trail system. Is it open to anybody? Yes. Yes. And you can go online and get their trail map and know where to park. On that one. Potomac they Shores. It's really easy to find. Yeah. Uh, that's a couple miles too, so uh, yeah. a really well built trail. Yeah, we actually have their existing trail on the map. Uh, only a portion of it is designated part of the Heritage Trail, but this all exists and it's a terrific resource, uh, really well built by a professional trail uh, construction company out of West Virginia and uh, awesome fun for hiking, running, riding a mountain bike. And they're actually moving into the uh, site plan review for the phase two of the trails down here. I believe they have three phases planned, so it'll be a pretty extensive natural surface trail system when it's all finished out. Um, so you see we switched maps. As we exit Lethalvania, we cross from and, and cross into Potomac Shores. We cross from the Woodbridge District to the Potomac District, and uh, the county and the regional uh, commission have divided the trail alignment in Prince William in half for planning ease. Uh, the southern alignment officially begins at Potomac Shores and continues through the town of Dumfries, through Prince William Forest Park, uh, the National Museum of Marine Corps, and into Locust Shade Park, which serves as our southern trailhead before we join our friends in Stafford. Uh, this part of the route is still under development. In Woodbridge, it's relatively set. We're moving to the construction phase with a lot of the projects. Here, we just kicked off our public involvement at the end of February, uh, soliciting ideas for destinations, uh, recreation experiences, suggested routes, spurs uh, to our public stakeholder groups like the PHTA and our other agency partners. So, uh, because it's such a long-term project, it's relatively open-ended. We're still soliciting comments if you have them. Feel free to email trails at pwcgov.org. That's our generic uh, trails uh, program email that comes to myself uh, and Gary. And in the meantime, we have some long-term plans to renovate our trail system at Locust Shade to be a more inviting trailhead. Uh, and build out some better connections with the town of Dumfries and really get that sort of main street promenade ex uh, experience looped into the trail system. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to jump in, but I did, there is a public canoe kayak area right here in Potomac Shores. Actually, it might be for Potomac Shores residents, but that's a new building area there for just for canoe and kayak access. And I mentioned Tim's. Mark, do you still do your Uber driving from Tim's? 
This thing, yes. Okay. Mark, if you want to go to Tim's and you want to be able to unwind and sober up on the way home, Mark does a ferry service. Tim's is a great local restaurant. It is old Woodbridge, old Dumfries. It's, it's a, where folks have lived here forever ago. Um, it's a big party spot. So uh, I only take the kids during the day. Uh, it's a great place. And it's a destination on the river. I don't believe so, at least not since I've been with the county. The county just acquired from Potomac Shores 113 acres of uh, which is called it's called it's, it's, the geographical name is Possum Nose uh, Gun Battery. It's it, the, the, the Battle of Cockpit Point was fought here. That, so that's a very historic area there. Really well uh, well taken care of entrenchments. They're privately owned. It's been cut off by the railroad with a lot of access. And then we ask that the developer include a, a really beautiful upland forest, a 90 plus acre, 96 acre upland forest adjacent to it. So um, the Potomac Shores developers are supposed to work with the county to gain access to Cockpit Point. Right now, all we have is so once a place. Did you say that historic work is Possum Point? It's, it's, yeah, Possum, yeah, Possum Nose, Possum Point. Possum Point. Um, the, uh, we're, we're calling it Cockpit Point Civil War Park. That's just the working name. Uh, so right now we're offering very limited tours because we have we can drive down the railroad. That little bit of section we have, but it's beautiful, beautiful property. Oh. We we expect to be able to have at least uh, at least two miles worth of trails, and that's going to be a connection from uh, Potomac Shores into this property. So it'll. It'll be either a spur to the Heritage Trail or a part of it. I, we're not, I guess we haven't worked that out yet. It's fair, we just acquired it in the end of 2015. So it's, um, and there's no real planning money for it at this point, uh, but we're working on it. And I guess, do you want to go for um, As Brennan sort of alluded to, on the southern half of the county, we have so many resources, both inland with, with the, the National Park and uh, Locust Shade and the Museum of the Marine Corps and on the water with Cockpit Point and Potomac Shores that the Heritage Trail is going to be more of a series of braided routes uh, connecting all of those resources to a, a broad general corridor uh, with plenty of neighborhood access. So whereas in Woodbridge it's still mostly a linear route, uh, sort of your more traditional suburban greenway type trail, um, down here it, it's essentially going to be uh, a series of routes lim uh, linked with uh, sort of the same theme, uh, interpretive theme. Uh, and as a consequence, it'll connect several developing centers of uh, residential and commercial uh, areas. Yes, it, just like, like, like Woodbridge, it is very, it's becoming densely populated as far as development. But, uh, like I said, unlike Woodbridge, we're going to be connecting directly to a lot of those communities. And Potomac Shores is a huge part of that, because they're building their own trails. And they'll connect to, um, they'll, they'll help us connect to the Southbridge, which is another big, big uh, development area, and into the town of Dumfries. So it's, uh, I guess we're going to turn around a little bit so we can just go straight through. Yeah. And uh, one of the, the cool projects we have coming up that, that Tom just reminded me, uh, the county is, is undertaking a stream restoration of Dewey's Run in, right in this area, uh, which is going to offer us the opportunity to develop a natural surface trail alongside it that's part of this network. Yeah, we're, we are working with Dominion to utilize some of their transmission line corridors for trail alignments uh, as sort of second resorts at least. Are you getting a lot of pushback on that? No, actually, uh, we're working with, with them pretty closely, not only on the Heritage Trail, but on our Occoquan Greenway in the Occoquan District. Um, sort of working through a proof of concept project up on the Occoquan Greenway that uh, will hopefully help them wrap their minds around natural surface trail development under the power lines and sort of put their mind at ease for some of these bigger projects down here. Uh, but no, no feedback or no pushback. A lot of um, questions, feedback, and uh, little tweaks to the trail alignment to make sure that they're not destroying it when they move their maintenance equipment through to access their power poles. Uh, but so far, it's been a pretty productive relationship. And uh, 
just uh, Gary Dorman with Dominion has been coming to a lot of our stakeholder meetings, so they're well represented with the Heritage Trail uh, sort of group of advocates and agency stakeholders. Um, we're, we're turning around now, as you can tell. Blossom uh, Point, the power plant, Dominion's power plant's uh, behind us now. That goes into Quantico Creek, which is very similar to the Apco Creek. We silt it in. It was a big port area. Conference was a port town. Uh, so the access along the river there is very difficult because of the power plant. They, they have a, they're a huge landowner. So, but again, they're helping us with these connections using their their uh, power line right away. <clears throat> so they've been a really good partner to us. What Ryan mentioned earlier is we're starting to build. We're starting to conceptually decide on those threads that bring you to those, to those other areas, those connection points. It's not as easy as Woodbridge, which it's been 20 years in the making, so I, I guess it's easy is relative. But um, one of the big things that we want to do is find a way through here. Uh, route 1 is going to be changed in that area, the Route 234 and Route 1, um, because of all the development, they're going to widen it and do some things. So we think there's an opportunity to make the connections into the town of Dumfries. And then once we get into Dumfries on the sidewalks, we would like to jump the uh, mine. Sorry, where am I here? Uh, yeah. Right here. Yeah, we'd like to, to jump um, Quantico Creek and head into the Pittsburgh Forest Park. Because uh, that's actually a, a, a single largest section of the Old Kings Highway in the county is within Pittsburgh uh, Forest Park. It's one mile. And so we'd like to take advantage of that. And then at that point, that's a beautiful park. And at that point, we can get all the way down to where we need to get to the uh, Marine Corps base. Eugene, right here. Right here. That's that's a difficult area too, because that's a major road. Drop with the windy road. There's no sidewalks. Um, so we got some really really big pressure points. Excuse me, that we're going to work on here. Uh, but it's you can see it moves away from the river there. And the main reason is because of Possum Point and Quantico, the Marine base. Yeah. Is that a separate town? Like, no, it's not incorporated. It's part of the county. Okay. Yeah. It used to be part of the county. Yeah. So, um, as Brendan said, we move inland a little bit the further south we get. And obviously, we can't show off Prince William Forest Park from the river. Um, but they are one of the largest completed sections of the Heritage Trail on this part of the county. They actually have two routes. One on the North Valley Trail, which is your traditional hiking trail that's open to pedestrians only, correct? Uh, and then a bike route that includes uh, that includes access from 234's bike path uh, through the gravel Burma Road and onto the park scenic drive. Uh, again, we run into that pressure point of the interchange with 95 and Joplin Road at Triangle, um, but both of these routes need to converge at the, the Marine Corps Museum, which also has a completed section as part of their interpretive trail on the history of the Marine Corps. Um, and, and that trail continues all the way into Lucas Shade Park and on to Stafford. And as I alluded to before, um, working on plans to renovate and expand the trail system at Lucas Shade to make it uh, more worthy of being the, the heritage trails or trailhead essentially for the county. In the same way that Occoquan is a really great starting place, an intersection of the Heritage Trail, our Occoquan Greenway, the East Coast Greenway, and Fairfax's Cross County Trail. We want to make sure that Lucas Shade offers like a really distinctive user experience and uh, leaves people with uh, warm feelings as they leave or enter the county on the trail. What about using North Eastern uh, Prince Forest Park to get over closer to Dumfries? Yeah. <laughs> it looks like you're going straight into Dumfries. Um, well, I, I think that that's a discussion that we're having. Yeah. yeah. It's great to have Cynthia here. We're going to try to set up some kind of tour hiking this fall. It's a little cooler. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, that's that. That's our goal. Yeah. yeah. And we created a whole new trail. That's going to take a while because they got to update their trail plans and things like that and, and agree to it. But the Potomac yeah, Heritage yeah. Trail is one of six statewide trails, and that's one reason that Lynn and I are here. We take a real special interest in the Potomac Heritage Trail. Um, and there's two national trails that are also statewide trails. So the Appalachian National Scenic Trail and the Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail are both two of our statewide trails, and they're also national trails, and they, so they have a real special significance. Also wanted to mention that, you know, 
taking the time to route this trail through scenic areas is extremely important if you're talking about wanting to get users off roadways and actually using the trail system. Um, and they've taken a real effort here, you can see, to, to make sure that the trail is routed beautifully through the county. In, in Richmond, we have the James River um, Park System, which goes all along the James River. And they just completed an economic impact study of that in April. And just, it showed, the study, which was done by Virginia Commonwealth University, showed how important the trail was to uh, both property values and how many visitors it was bringing in. Um, and it actually is like a 60 to 1 return on investment when, when you look at what they actually are budgeted for the park system and what they, you know, brought in in terms of uh, economic impact. And, and they found out, you know, we thought Maymont, you know, Virginia uh, Museum of Fine Arts, you know, some of those other places were our top draws in the city. And we found out that most people are coming in the city to you to get on that trail system. It has the highest visitation. So you may want to take a look at that. I'll be glad to send you the link if you're interested. You said that um, Appalachian Trail and Potomac are the two, the national. only two national trails in Virginia. The they're state. not the only two national trails, but they're the only two national trails that are part of our statewide trail system because they're non-motorized. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. So that sort of wraps up our route through the county, uh, but hopefully, being out here on the water and seeing it as a continuous corridor and hearing from our friends at DCR, National Park Service, um, puts it in context for you. This is a really great opportunity for Prince William, for our residents as a local community resource and also uh, to sort of put us on the map as, a, as an outdoor community, a destination. So you know, as we cruise back to Pennsylvania again, if you have any questions, feel free to corner Brendan and I. In, in certain parts where it makes sense, for sure, like Locust Shade already has historic mountain bike use. Um, Potomac Shores is already open to mountain bikes. So uh, traditional non-motorized, like the rest of the trails that we that the Parks Department manages in the county, be open to uh, bikes and pedestrians and equestrians as the baseline with some uh, management scheme differences where it makes sense. I could launch a boat or pull something out. One time I get in and I didn't realize I was basically yelling at the guy. An older guy, I got in, jumped in his old truck, he looked, and then the, the grandson and the grandma were there. So I had to put my arm, <laughs> put my arm around him to back up. I'm like, hey guys, this will just take a second. I just jammed that truck down the wall. There was freaking police and jumping in the truck with a very pretty That's awesome. Well, you could, you, you, I mean, you've been there. Right? Yeah. Uh, and now they're actually shutting down. We didn't. We used to let everybody park on the grass. I guess now for resource reasons. Uh, yeah, right. Right. Well, like you said, you get to so many people, and you can only handle so many, so many people in the room. We actually did a, a time study on cash registers and the passes to find out when the busiest time was, so we could mitigate it. Right. And it's uh, Sunday from like 11:30 to 2. Right. 